thanks for joining us, everybody. I see we've got some new folks who've um, entered the Zoom meeting. Um, welcome to the first community forum for the Essex Zoning Bylaw Review Project. We're really grateful that you're here with us today. Um, we will be getting started shortly. We just want to make sure that there we leave some uh, a little bit more time for some more folks to join us who um, are interested, so that, that way we can all get started together. Um, in the meantime, just so that you know, while we're in the presentation, um, you won't be able to unmute, but we will be um, going into breakout rooms for some more discussion later. Uh, if you need to um, communicate with us, you can do so via the chat, but the breakout rooms is really a great place to bring all of your great ideas uh, and thoughts uh, with regard to the presentation. Um, so in the meantime, um, hang tight. Uh, we'll be getting started shortly. Um, and thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Christian. I think we might go ahead and get started because we have a lot for, for an hour and a half. There's a lot to talk about with zoning and uh, bylaw. So let's get started. But thank you for getting us kicked off. And thanks for everyone for joining. It's really exciting. We have over 50 people and hopefully more will join us as the night goes on. Um, thank you so much for taking time out of your evening to join us tonight. I know it's hard whenever we're all so busy to sit on another Zoom in the evening, but really appreciate you taking the time. Um, my name is Andrea Harris-Long and I'm a senior planner with the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. And we'll do some more introductions later, but as Christian mentioned, we are here to talk about the town of Essex and their project to look at their zoning bylaw. Next slide. Um, before we go over the agenda for tonight, we do wanna remind everyone that we're recording this meeting. We're going to be posting the video on the project website so that folks who couldn't attend live can still watch the recording and interact and learn what we go over tonight. Next, please. Um, so we have a packed agenda, as I mentioned, for this evening. Um, we're gonna do some introductions in a minute so you can get to know who's on the project team. Um, we're gonna share some background on what this project is all about, and then we'll get into some Zoning 101, which I promise is more fun than it sounds. It sounds a little, you know, Zoning 101 back to school, but it will make it fun. Um, we want to make sure that we're all on the same page about zoning terms and concepts, so that's why we're spending a little time talking broadly about zoning. And then we'll dig into Essex and what the zoning bylaw and regulations look like in the town. And then we'll have some time for some questions. And then the meat and potatoes of the night is our small group discussion, where we'll get to hear from you. And so we'll spend some time at the end of the night doing that, and then we'll come back, go over some quick next steps, and then um, leave you to it. And then after the forum, hopefully you'll continue to engage with us by taking a survey that we'll share at the end of the night um, so that you can continue to learn about zoning and give us your feedback about what zoning means to you and what you would like to see change. So before we get into the presentation, I'm gonna turn it over to Ruth Green, the chair of the Essex Board of Selectmen and Kim Drake, the chair of the Essex Planning Board to share some opening remarks. Kim, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, first, I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Essex Planning Board. We do have a quorum here tonight. And so just to make sure everything is um, proper, I want to make sure that um, the record stands that we've got the whole, whole board with us tonight. Um, not the whole board, but we have members of the board with us tonight. Um, and with that, I want to thank you all for, for participating. We feel that this is a really important step um, in our goal to update zoning in Essex. Um, we always strive to have projects that will um, make the bylaws understandable and suited to the current needs of the town. And um, this year we were very fortunate to have the participation of MAPC through a grant that we've received. So uh, we thank these folks for, for providing their professional guidance and um, really look forward to seeing what comes out of it. Thanks, Kim. Bruce. Thank you. Um, so I do not have a quorum this evening, so I do not need to call to order, but um, I just wanna start by truly thanking MAPC for taking this ball and running with it. Um, for everyone on the line, as you know, at annual town meeting, May 15th of 2021, the voters voted in favor of a two year moratorium, which was article 14. Um, the moratorium was for change of use from residential or open space to commercial or industrial A or B. We don't have traditional zoning here in Essex, so at times commercial and residential uses are not always in harmony. 
The town of Essex is thrilled to be working with MAPC to review the impacts of our current impending and potential businesses. We want to mitigate any future impacts in the health, safety, welfare, and quality of life for our Essex residents while we ch still continue to keep the character that so many people moved here um, because, because they enjoy that. We are going to be looking at not only zoning, I keep referencing zoning, but we're also going to be looking at potential suggested bylaw amendments um, and how to best address concerns, protect our properties, and honestly, most of our residents' biggest uh, investments. So again, thank you to MAPC. I'm thrilled to see what happens in these forums, and I look forward to what, what's discussed tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Ruth and Kim. Um, I think that's perfect setup for what we're going to talk about. So Christian, if you can advance, I think, two slides, maybe. One more. There we go. Thanks. Um, so let's get into the details of the project that Kim and Ruth just perfectly set up. So the town's hired us in APC to help them with this project, and we're being guided by largely the planning board in this work, along with support from town staff, Brendan Zabriki, the town administrator, and Dana Minnan, the town planner. And, you know, this is a, a really great team to lead this effort. On the MAPC front, I'm joined with regional planner Courtney Lewis, who you'll hear from in a minute. And then tonight we have Christian Brandt, Sakanya Sharma, Alex Koppelman, and Alexis Smith helping with um, running this meeting. And so lots of MAPC support tonight for the Fix the Village to run a Zoom meeting sometimes. Uh, but we're really happy to be working on this project. Um, but lastly, we wanted to note that it's not just the town and MAPC, but it's really the community, you all attending this um, Zoom meeting, you're part of the project. The input that you're providing tonight and through other aspects of the project is going to be really critical to how successful it is. So thank you for being a part of it. Next, please. So hopefully some of you have heard about MAPC, but if not, I'll give a quick primer on who we are. We're the regional planning agency for 101 cities and towns in the greater Boston area that's shown here on the map. And we provide technical assistance to local municipalities in a variety of ways, from planning projects like this, to community engagement, to data services, a whole range of things. Um, we also just work to promote smooth growth, smart growth around the region and convene different partners to foster regional collaboration. And I put our website on the slide here because if you're not familiar with us, I'd recommend you go and take a look and see the different um, projects and work that we do, because we really do work with all of the cities and towns around us, not just Essex. Next slide. So this is a, a lot on a slide. You can kind of look at the, the bold text here, but this is a very short project that has a lot going on in a short amount of time. Um, we uh, first started working on this project back in November and December, where we were collecting a lot of data to understand the town's existing land uses and development patterns. Um, that was one of the main goals of this project. We also have been reviewing the existing zoning bylaw um, just internally, looking for opportunities for improvement ways like it can be better aligned with best planning practices and legal requirements. Um, a big part of this project is public engagement. So the town really wanted us to help them uh, engage with the public in a few different ways to hear how zoning is working and how it can be improved. And so to do that, uh, we conducted some one-on-one -on -one interviews with different people that are familiar with working with the zoning bylaw in December and January. Um, this included folks like the town planner, the town building inspector, past town volunteers. Uh, we also did some focus groups last month with different residents and current town volunteers to better understand issues and opportunities for zoning. Um, I think many of you may be on this call and we really appreciate if you are on the call and you did an interview or a focus group with us. Thank you for joining us. Um, and you can see that we're now at the point of doing the first of two community forums. We'll be doing a survey. So we're trying to you know, engage with residents in a lot of different ways to make sure that we're getting feedback from a wide range of people in the town. The project will culminate in a final report later this spring with some zoning recommendations. And throughout this process, we're working closely with the planning board. We'll be going back to them next month to talk more about the project. So we're making sure that we're engaging with them at different points along the way. And lastly, it's important to note, this project is not proposing any bylaw amendments at this time. This is just kind of setting up the, the next conversation for when um, specific zoning bylaw amendments might be proposed. Next slide. And this project is part of a bigger process. So it's important to note that this is kind of step one. We're looking at the bylaw, looking for ways that it can be changed or improved. 
Uh, the town is looking to apply for a state grant to help fund what will be the, the third phase of the project, which is actually the pre preparation of zoning bylaw amendments. And so that's when um, later this fall, if the grant gets approved and awarded, the planning board will really start the work of working with the town and the residents to propose amendments to the zoning bylaw. Next slide. And so just to reiterate the goals of the project and why we're here, um, the town really wants to understand existing land use patterns and development patterns, um, gauge the public opinion. Zoning, we know, is kind of controversial sometimes, and the town wants to make sure that residents can participate and be heard throughout this process. And ultimately, whatever zoning amendments do get proposed, they want to be successful and reflect what the community wants. Um, and then also, we want to consider like the best planning practices and you know, planning covers a wide range of things from environmental to housing, to economic development. So there are things that can be done in the zoning bylaw that can advance some of these different planning areas. And all of this will result in a report, as I mentioned, with some zoning recommendations for the planning board to consider. So the goals for tonight are a little uh, less lofty. We just want to start hearing from you some more. And uh, beyond us sharing information with you, we want to better understand the issues that you've encountered, maybe either using the bylaw or observing how it's been implemented through the developments around you. We also want to hear what you think about zoning amendment options that we're going to be presenting later. And this includes some minor bylaw changes, but potentially some bigger updates. Next slide. Uh, and so before we get into the Zoning 101, the next part of the presentation, we wanted to do a quick poll question to see how familiar you, familiar you are with zoning. Uh, we know some folks know zoning in and out, and some folks are maybe less familiar. So I think Christian was going to help by pulling up a poll question. And um, if you are on your computer, this is probably easier, but you get a little pop-up screen and you can tell us how familiar you are with zoning. And it's anonymous. We're not going to double check any answers. We just kind of want to get a sense for in the room who's familiar with zoning. Are you able to pull up the full question, Christian? Yes, it's on screen. Yes, oh, it's on. Perfect. <laughs> I just can't see it. That's why. Okay. I think um, the poll was ended prematurely, so uh, only 64% of folks responded. So we could relaunch it um, if you would like. Yes, can we try that again? Sorry, yes. sorry, folks. We're gonna try it one more, one more time. All right. All right, should be live. Okay, so it looks like we have um, about 88% of people have responded. The poll is still live. So if you're still thinking about it, now is your chance to respond. I'm going to give it mm, 10 more seconds and then I'll close the poll. All right. And now I'm sharing the results. So it looks like 47% um, of folks who responded said they were moderate, moderately familiar. The next largest portion was 36 who said they were a little bit familiar. Um, and then a pretty similar amount of people said that they were both experts or not at all. So we do have some experts in the room, <laughs> which is exciting. That's great. Thank you so much for participating. Uh, it's good to hear that we have a good mix of people with different levels of familiarity. So now I'll turn things over to Courtney to talk about zoning. All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Courtney Lewis. As Andrea said, I'm a regional planner in the land use department at MAPC. Uh, and before we dig into uh, the Essex zoning bylaw, we wanted to talk more broadly about zoning. Next slide. So we often uh, talk about them jointly, 
but planning and zoning are not the same thing. Uh, planning involves goal setting and creating a shared vision of what a community aspires to be in the future. Uh, it involves uh, the town's comprehensive plan or uh, or a master plan, which is the, the long range plan for the town. Uh, it can also include neighborhood, neighborhood or uh, area specific plans uh, and also functional plans like uh, the open space and recreation plan, the hazard mitigation plan and the municipal vulnerability preparedness plan. Uh, zoning is the regulatory tool used to implement the vision laid out in a plan. Um, zoning regulates how a property can be used and developed, uh, and it places reasonable limits on land development uh, to best serve the public good. Uh, zoning rules can help, uh, help communities function better and also reduce conflicts between neighbors. Next slide. Um, the, the, the town has done um, several different long range uh, plans in the past. Um, many of these efforts uh, identified opportunities for uh, zoning bylaw amendments uh, to help achieve overarching goals like preserving open space, uh, protecting water quality, expanding economic development opportunities, and increasing housing options. Next slide. So what is zoning? Historically, um, zoning was established to protect the health, safety, and welfare of a community by uh, separating incompatible land uses from one another. Um, this, this has been mirrored uh, locally in the stated purpose for zoning in chapter six of the town's uh, general bylaws. Next slide. So why do communities have zoning? Well, um, zoning helps to regulate the use of land and guides where specific land uses can go. It helps to manage growth. Uh, it defines the scale and character of development uh, and, and can also be used to help protect natural and cultural resources. Um, uh, the site plan that's, uh, that's on the screen shows all the different development features that can be regulated through zoning. Uh, things like the, the size and scale of buildings, uh, where parking should go and how much uh, should exist, how big buffers or landscape landscaping should be um, to, to provide protection uh, for neighbors, um, how properties should be accessed safely, um, and it can it can also regulate some um, some of the externalities of uh, different uses. Uh, so it can impose limits on lighting, noise, uh, hours of operation, uh, and heavy commercial um, vehicle traffic, for instance. Next slide. So uh, conventional or traditional zoning is, is, is made up of two parts. Um, the, zone, the zoning bylaw or ordinance um, and the zoning map. So the, the zoning bylaw uh, contains the written rules of zoning. Um, and and these, um, and these zoning rules include a, a classification system of zoning districts that specifies what can be built and uh, what uses are permitted in each of the, partic in each of the particular zones. Um, the zoning map divides a community up into zones or zoning districts and, um, and, and these districts, and this is the, it, uh, the map graphically illustrates uh, where specific land uses can be located. Um, zoning districts can, can be single use districts like residential, commercial, or industrial, 
or they can be mixed use districts. Next slide. Um, most communities throughout the state have some form of conventional zoning, uh, including surrounding communities like Ipswich, which has which is divided into ten base zoning districts. Next slide. The town of Hamilton, which is divided into four base zoning districts. Uh, Manchester by the Sea, which is divided into seven base zone districts. And finally, uh, the city of Gloucester, which is which is a bit more complex, uh, and it's divided into 15 base zoning districts. So uh, in the next part of the presentation, Andrea is going to talk a little bit about how zoning in, in Essex differs from that uh, of, of other communities. Um, so modern zoning has, uh, has three fundamental components, um, which are allowed uses, um, development and design standards and process and procedures. Next slide. Uh, Allowed uses is the first component, and it specifies where land uses are allowed in a specific district, um, such as residential, commercial, and industrial. Um, it specifies which uses can go together and which, uh, which uses should be separated. Uh, for instance, you wouldn't want a heavy industrial use uh, right next to a residential use or an institutional use like an uh, elementary school. Uh, this inf uh, go back just for a second. So this information can be formatted in um, as basic lines of text in the zoning bylaw, but it's um, but a best practice is to organize this information in a in a table of use regulations, which again specifies what specific uses are allowed or prohibited in a particular zoning district. Next slide. Uh, the second element determines how a development should look and feel and typically has standards for uh, lot size, uh, setbacks, lot coverage, building placement, building height, um, parking requirements, landscaping, and signage. Next slide. Uh, zoning can also be, uh, be complemented by design guidelines, um, which are a series of design statements and images that outline uh, the desired design elements and qualities that shape a, a particular development. Uh, they usually apply to a specific geographic area, like um, like a downtown area, um, and can be used to improve the character of new development, um, articulate the town's standards of quality for development, and address things like building massing, uh, building height, setbacks, uh, sustainable building design features, uh, like solar panels or um, turbines. Um, uh, they can address um, parking and access, uh, landscaping and buffers, uh, as well as signage, awnings, and, and uh, window treatments. Um, these these uh, design guidelines are only as, um, only as strong as the mechanism used to enforce them, meaning you need to have good zoning in place uh, and uh, you can establish design guidelines which complement the zoning. Um, the design guidelines don't regulate building use. Uh, they don't replace uh, existing zoning or building codes uh, and they don't, um, they don't regulate uh, or redesign streets or the public right-of-way. 
Next slide. Uh, the last component of zoning establishes a process and procedure for um, it, it establishes a process and procedure to develop land. So it specifies um, which review body will evaluate a particular proposal. It explains when and how the public can participate in the development process. Uh, it establishes a, a process for um, applicants that want to appeal a decision. Um, and um, uh, the list to the right is not an exist is not an exhaustive list because there are several different decision makers involved uh, in different aspects of zoning depending on the the scale and the type of project that's being proposed. Um, this includes various boards like the the planning board, the building inspector. Um, the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Conservation Commission, the Historical Commission, um, and some of these um, some of these bodies are uh, advisory, and others uh, require specific approval. Um, the town actually has a really good resource, which I am um, pasting in the chat right now, which kind of um, details um, who you need to go to for um, a specific project and who you need to speak with, as well as what uh, the required materials are when you come before uh, these, uh, these particular um, decision-making bodies. Next slide. So um, now I'm gonna hand things back to Andrea who will talk a little bit about the town's existing zoning bylaw. Thanks, Courtney. Uh, next slide, please. So before we wanted to do the audit of the existing zoning bylaw, we wanted to get a better sense for the town and kind of the existing condition. Um, as you all know, Essex is a small town. It's lovely with the Great Marsh and the wetlands and the rivers. Um, the current population is a little over 3,600 people. There are uh, 1,600 total housing units in town, and the median household income is a little over 106,000. Um, Essex is about 14 square miles in size. Many of that includes a lot of natural resources and permanently protected open space. Next slide. So as planners, you know, we love a good map. And so with every zoning project, we like to create a lot of them. We've tried to limit them <laughs> in tonight's presentation because we know it's hard to see the details on the Zoom. But we wanted to share the existing land use map here. We like to start with this as kind of a baseline for understanding what land uses exist and where how development has occurred. Um, this map is created based on the town assessor's data. And while it's a little difficult to read, I wanted to note a few things. So Essex is largely residential, about 42% of the town's acreage is in residential use. The town has a significant share of permanently protected open space. So that's both the green on this map, but then also a lot of the blue, the institutional category, um, that includes a lot of nonprofits or charitable organizations or public private institutions that own um, land, and then also a good share of the private protected open space. Only about 2% of the land area is in commercial or industrial uses. Next slide. Next slide. Um, and then this, this kind of shows a better picture of where the protected open space is. So a lot of the town is in permanently protected open space and we just wanted to better clarify um, where those properties are. These are properties that are likely to never be developed because they're in a per, uh, protection perpetuity. Next slide. We also wanted to get a better understanding of where new, new development can actually occur. And so to do this, we look at what land is developmentally constrained and the parcels shown in orange on this map show those with some limitations to what can happen based on whether there's a flood zone or wetlands, whether it's permanently protected open space or water bodies or rights of way. Um, and this I think paints a nice picture to see where actually there's true development capacity for either redevelopment or new development to happen. And you can see it's really concentrated in the center of town along portions of Martin Street and Western Ave or Southern Ave. Next, please. 
Um, and then let's, uh, once we kind of got a better sense of the existing conditions, we turned to the zoning bylaw. Uh, so zoning is found in chapter six of the town's bylaw. I'm sure you all have dug into this. It's riveting reading, you know, to read the town bylaws. Uh, but there are 16 sections in the zoning uh, chapter, and they span a variety of zoning topics that you would find in most zoning bylaws, um, from use regulations to dimensional standards, parking, signs, some of the special zoning districts. Next, please. Um, and this is the zoning map for the town. You'll notice that it's pretty different from those examples that Courtney just shared from other places. Um, it's because Essex has a really unique zoning bylaw and a zoning map. Um, it's uh, unique because Essex is one of only a few uh, communities across Massachusetts that doesn't have that conventional zoning that Courtney mentioned. Instead, Essex has a general zoning district that allows pretty much any use from residential to commercial or industrial to occur pretty much anywhere in town as long as it can meet the minimum dimensional standards and um, lot uh, setback requirements, things like that. This means that there aren't really residential areas like you would find in other towns. You really can have residential, commercial, and industrial next door to one another. Um, the town has enacted three zoning districts for very specific places. So you have downtown, central Konomo Point, and southern Konomo Point. The Konomo Point districts shown um, in the pink and orange colors, those allow for the residential uses that have historically been there. The downtown district is a newer district that allows for mixed use development and expanded housing options. Next, please. As far as existing regulations go, as I mentioned, Essex is pretty unique in that all uses are allowed pretty much anywhere as long as those dimensional standards are met, the minimum lot size and set setback requirements. The town site plan review process is tied to building size rather than specific use, which is pretty unique. And that's also utilized a lot more than the special permit process. It's important to note that the site plan review process allows the planning board to work with applicants on development design and siting, but it doesn't really allow for any denial of applications. Uses are still permitted. It's just helping to um, make sure that they're developed on site properly. The special permit process, however, that allows the planning board uh, more discretion, uh, but this applies to very few commercial or industrial uses. So. Again, pretty much any use is allowed, which is a little unique. Um, and lastly, the zoning bylaw has few performance standards or design guidelines. And this makes it challenging to manage how commercial and industrial uses interact with their neighbors, especially if that neighbor is a resident. And it's kind of interesting, but few development guidelines are in the bylaw actually can hinder housing options more than commercial or industrial growth whenever you start to dig into things. Next, please. And so, Whenever we looked through the, the zoning bylaw, and then also through the, the input that we've received through the focus groups and the interviews and conversations with the town and the planning board, we really see that there are kind of two main options for the town to consider in updating the zoning bylaw. And we want to present those options to you tonight and then really hear from you what your thoughts are on these options, what could maybe be also an option for the town, um, and then what additional information do you need about either of these, op these options for us to consider moving forward for um, the next forum or future aspects of the project. So the first option that the town could do to update their zoning bylaw is to establish more zoning districts. This is moving towards the model of more conventional zoning that Courtney went over where you have more colorful map where you maybe have a residentially designated area, areas designated for commercial and industrial. This option would allow the town to work with residents to designate areas that make sense for commercial and industrial growth, but then also preserve the residential areas more and actually have residential areas. The second option would be to continue to allow uses to occur everywhere by increased requirements for the non-industrial or non-residential uses. So this could be done by adding building size limitations or buffer requirements, noise limitations, some of those design guidelines that Courtney went over during the zoning 101 uh, part of the presentation. This could also expand the site plan review and special permit processes so that more non-residential land uses um, would just have to go through a little bit more of a review process and also have more of an opportunity for the public to engage in the process um, to help manage how properties are developed and redeveloped. I think regardless of either of these options, there are opportunities to modernize the zoning bylaw, make minor amendments like updating definitions, reflecting changes that have happened in state law or case law, 
um, you know, making it a little more user friendly, adding graphics and just making it so that there's less uh, ambiguity in the bylaw. So I think that's an opportunity regardless of these two options. So when we transition to the small group discussions, we really wanna hear what you think about these things, what the town should be considering up beyond these two options. And then again, what information or concerns, questions do you have that we need to try to answer as we go along the process? Next slide. So we do have a little bit of time for the group as a whole to ask some questions. I know that there have been some questions in the chat, which is great. Um, I think that we do have a couple minutes for folks if they wanna raise their hand, use the little raise hand icon in the Zoom um, and ask a verbal question about any of the information that we presented tonight, clarity on the zoning 101, clarity on the project. Um, we do ask that you kind of refrain from sharing your opinion about the options. That's what the small group discussions are for. But at this point, if there's a clarifying question that can be answered and benefit for the whole group, we're happy to answer those questions right now. And Christian, can you just stop sharing for um, screen sharing for just a moment? Absolutely. Thank you. It looks like I'm Troy has uh, their hand raised. So I'm going to um, ask Troy to unmute so that you can ask your question. Yes, I just re-recorded. Not, I don't, I didn't stop recording it. So I'm not sure why that happened. Um, I don't, I think that, um, I don't, I don't think that adding more restrictions would make it harder to to get a variance. I th I think the way that we're trying to approach this project is some of what we've heard through our one on one interviews is that people really want to be able to protect the the value of their part of their of their land, and so we want to ensure that. Um, we we provide uh, we we kind of lay all the options on the table um, and allow the town to tell us what they think the best fit would be for them uh, moving forward. Um, but I don't I don't I wouldn't necessarily view additional restrictions as um as a hindrance to being able to obtain a variance in the future and I'll, I'll just kind of piggyback on that and say i think that um the question about the variance and the applicability or approval is correct i think that also adding more restrictions, it could mean that the town needs to maybe expand the administrative capacity to administer an ordinance with more requirements or process. Um, I think that might have also been one of the, what you were getting at with the question. Um, so that's something that the planning board and the town administration can consider as they make amendments, how can they implement and administer and enforce um, a new bylaw or revisions to the bylaw to make sure that it's being administered and carried out um, effectively. I think Sandy had her hand up next. Yes, this is Bruce Shaw. I'm sitting here with Sandy. Um, so uh, I have two questions. One's, one's a short one, which is, is it unusual for a town to have as little zoning regulation as Essex does? I, I would say yes. Uh, it's, I think uh Essex is very unique in the way that it has approached zoning um I yeah okay thank you that's what I thought too and then so the second question leading from that is I've been a resident here for 25 years and I've gone to a lot of town meetings over the years and it seems to me there's fair amount of resistance to zoning or there has been when it's come up in town meeting. I'm wondering if somebody could give the history from the town of why the town has not moved into the kind of zoning regulations that 
as you showed Courtney, the towns around us have. Um, this is this is Kim Drake, the chair of the planning board. Um, I think you you answered it with your question. It's because town meeting has resisted it. You know, there have been um, many different times when the town has uh, the planning board or others in the town have um, brought various changes to to zoning. And in in all of those instances, the town has voted not to um, address that. That doesn't mean that that you know, the times haven't changed, but but historically it was just the, the town that has, has decided not to do that. Great. Um, I am going to move on to Peter um, Kellerman next. You should be able to unmute. There we go. One thing that is um, unique about Essex is its um, farmland and agriculture. And one thing that I noticed was that in your use of your list of uses, you did not include farming and agriculture. And that's something that is important, not just for neighbors, but really for the entire community as far as a resource that one needs to think about in terms of protection and zoning. Yeah, I'm happy to take this one, Courtney. Uh, I think that traditionally agriculture is in its own zoning district in cities and towns. That's usually in places where, where there are counties, they'll have agricultural districts, but in cities and towns, there's usually a residential district, but in the case of a place like Essex, agricultural uses would be allowed. So it may be called just residential, but you could still have farms, you could have aquaculture, you could have some of those agricultural uses, but the, the district itself may just be called residential. So you can certainly still do agricultural activities in a town that has a more agricultural nature and especially a goals to preserve the existing kind of rural or agricultural character, but um, it just wouldn't have the name agricultural because your city or a town and in the world of zoning of nationwide, Cities and towns don't usually have agricultural districts. So I think that's why it wasn't included on that particular slide. Thank you. Um, all right, Lucy Steinert, you should be able to um, uh, unmute. I had sort of a couple of questions. I mean, when you present zoning, you talk about agricultural, industrial, residential, whatever. And one of the huge vulnerabilities for Essex not having zoning is that somebody could come in and build a Home Depot or in the case um, of a proposal across um, a couple of years ago, the pot shop on the corner of um, Harlow Street with 50 parking places. And are there ways that we could zone that were around water use or parking places required? Um, rather than industrial, residential, commercial. Because I don't think many of us care about somebody running a computer programming business out of their house. On the other hand, running a store where there are people coming day and night, people probably feel different about. Yes, you can definitely, that's the nice thing about zoning, you can customize it to fit your needs. And so if you don't want big box stores, for instance, uh, like a Home Depot, then you say maximum building size is only 10,000 square feet. Or if you want to make sure that parking is not close to the water, you say you need a 25-foot landscaped buffer if you're against the wetlands or the river. Um, so it's totally customizable. And that's those are the things that we want to hear so that we can inform in the recommendations and say um, things like, like what you just said, you have these precious resources, you don't want to have development encroach on those, what kinds of performance standards or development guidelines can you include to help protect them and make sure that whatever happens, it's kind of in character with what, what you want. To follow on for that, I mean, we're, in my lifetime here in Essex, I seem to see more and more flooding. We're a very low lying town. And how do we think about that in terms of our zoning and our ability to defend what we do have? 
Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think that we've seen a lot of communities, going back to what I just said about buffers, increase the buffers whenever they're uh, maybe in low-lying areas that have wetlands. Um, increasing the building elevation, that's something that's more in the building code. But thinking about how high buildings are if you're in uh, a low-lying area, um, I think that there are some other ways through like stormwater management, green infrastructure, um, just thinking about how the water moves as you disturb a property and you develop a site that can help with some of those climate change impacts. Um, Courtney, do you have anything else for that that you want to add? Um, yeah. That is definitely an issue that can be addressed through zoning. Uh, there's a lot of communities have uh, flood floodplain protection zones, uh, zoning districts which uh, uh, limit and regulate uh, building and development in uh, those areas that are are prone to flooding. Uh, the The town does have an existing floodplain overlay district. Um, and if uh, the community felt strongly enough about it, uh, the push would be to um, look at uh, beefing that uh, beefing that uh, beefing that particular um, regulations in that particular district up. Um, All right, um, I am going to go to Leslie next. Hi, I just wanted to um, tag on to uh, what Lucy had just mentioned with the question about the floodplain and potential flooding. Um, I don't know if you have all seen it, um, but it may be just something to look into. Essex County Greenbelt has, I, I heard, uh, Courtney just talked about that there is a, a floodplain uh, zoning. Uh, there's information that you have, but Essex County Greenbelt has done studies with Salem, Salem State, and they have not just the overlay district, but they have a five-year plan. It shows what, what it's going to look like in five years and 10 years for Essex um, and even farther out. But it's pretty, it's pretty surprising as far as the sea level rise and the impact on certain areas. And I just thought I should throw that out and is that may be something that someone may want to look into while looking at these zoning issues. Great. Thanks, Leslie. Um, before I move on to James, is uh, anyone from the team want to respond to that or, or should I just move on? No, I just, thank you for pointing that out um, and like I said, it's really a decision uh, as you as a community, like what you hold, uh, what you hold in high regard and what you value. And so if protecting uh, areas that flood is something that the town uh, feels is really important to address, then um, that's what a recommendation should be in 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 terms of changes to making changes to the zoning is, is being uh, being more restrictive of building and development in areas prone to flooding and, and, and protecting those areas uh, through zoning regulations. Um, Great. Um, I am going to move on to James. All right, thank you. Um, this is kind of in line of the, the last two um, questions. Um, I'm familiar with zoning. I sat on the zoning board in Manchester for a little while, but I, I know very, very little about Essex zoning. Um, and I've been, I've lived in the town for, I don't know, nine or 10 years now. When somebody does propose a development um, or, or a major renovation, how does that work in, in Essex now? even though we don't have the, the zone districts, um, does conservation get heavily involved and does the zoning board take into account the um, um, how close they are to wetlands and things like that? 
Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so the town does have a conservation commission and the town hasn't enacted a wetlands bylaw beyond what is just required from the state wetlands um, environmental protection state law. So if there is a development that's too close to the wetlands maybe or impacting the wetlands, then the conservation commission does get involved. But then they would also still go through the process of working with the planning board or if variance was needed, the zoning board of appeals. Um, so it is a similar process to other communities in that regard because they all have to follow the state wetlands protection act. Wonderful, thanks. Um, all right, I'm going to move on to um, Tom. Oops, sorry. Clicked on the. Uh, there we go. Thank person. you. There we go. <laughs> so I'm Tom Daniel. I live on Pond Street. And I just want to go back to Lucy's comment about uses and commercial uses and just note that there's a distinction in types of commercial uses as well. So, for instance, you know, on Pond Street, there was a house for sale last year. And there was someone actually contemplating buying it. It's got a few acres of land and they were contemplating setting up a paintball course. So, you know, folks come uh, play paintball battles, you know, in the afternoon, things like that, which, um, you know, is a type of commercial use, probably not the most appropriate thing for, you know, the context of Pond Street, but other types of commercial uses, um, you know, draw fewer people. And so there's, there's distinction to be made between commercial use and the parking requirements that zoning can also contemplate. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. That's a great distinction to make. Um, a lot of communities will have maybe a few different tiers of commercial zoning. One that's maybe neighborhood commercial that's smaller scale versus one that's a uh, commercial that allows those home depots wherever you may want them. Um, so it is a, a way to customize your zoning further to help that certain types of commercial or industrial uses and so on. Great. Um, I'm going to move on to Jake next. I'm also noting that there are a few questions in the chat that would um, could be um, good to address after Jake um, and before we go into breakouts. Hi. Um, I definitely think we need some sort of zoning. It was pretty stark to see that black, you know, everything goes uh, zoning with a few little colors here and there. But I really like Courtney, your phrasing of, you know, what do you hold and what do you value? And I, I'm wondering if this process that you all are engaged in is gonna elicit that from residents across town or will your recommendations provide a process or recommend a process that could facilitate that focus? I think past town discussions around zoning have focused on uh, what personal impacts it has and has not been framed in terms of values or protecting things we value, and that could be very helpful. Thanks. I'm happy to answer that. Yeah, Jake, um, so the, that's the whole point of tonight's meeting and this project in general uh, is to, to gather as much information. And we, as, um, as a consultant to the town, are really here to listen and to hear what residents say they want, they need, and they value in their community. And we then take that information and provide, uh, we listen to what you say you want, and then we provide you with recommendations uh, or ways that we see um, avenues uh, of getting the town to, to that particular place. And then, um, it's the decision is left with the the town, the community. You know, um, like I said, we're just here to listen, uh, and then based on what we've heard, we provide we um, we present that information back to you, and then we also provide recommendations. We say um, the community has has stated what we've heard is that you all uh, value the protection of open space or what we've heard is uh, the town would like to accommodate a growth for uh, a additional business, or uh, what we've heard is uh, protecting uh, the residential quality of uh, the town's existing neighborhoods is what's really important. Uh, and then 
from those statements, we provide you with recommendations on the best way to maintain or improve those, those things that you've uh, expressed to us are important for the town. And then the decision is, is then left in the hands of the town and the community on how you decide to move forward. Great, thanks, Courtney. Thanks, Jake. Um, I know John and Lucy, you have your hands raised. I do just want to recognize that some folks have asked some questions in the chat um, uh, a little bit ago. Um, so Victor said, could we standardize the Essex zoning so that we can not only protect property values, but keep the uniqueness of the town of Essex, for instance, uniform size within the zoning district or something like that? Yes, that's that's definitely something that can be regulated and and specified uh, through through zoning. Great. Um, I see. Also, that um, uh, Courtney, you answered Donna's question in the chat regarding why zoning is being considered now. And um, as Ruth and Kim mentioned at the beginning, that is um, because of the two-year moratorium. Um, Troy asked, "Can you speak to zoning Chapter Forty B?" and how affordable housing considerations likely need to be taken into consideration for zoning decisions to stand. Yeah, Alex is actually gonna to speak to this question. Great. Yeah, so um, I'm kinda try and uh, say it kind of briefly as, as uh, 40B can get kind of complex, um, but essentially uh, the state of Massachusetts has a law chapter 40B that requires every municipality in the state to have 10% of its housing stock as uh, subsidized affordable housing. If that's not the case, um, then a developer can use a different uh, permitting process, comprehensive permitting process, aside from what a local community zoning regulations are to facilitate a development that would then have to have 20 to 25% of its units be deed restricted affordable housing. Uh, other considerations in terms of zoning and affordable housing you can require a certain percent of housing in your local bylaws. You can have your local bylaws require a certain percent of new housing to be deed restricted affordable housing. Um, and then also there's just considerations about kind of naturally uh, occurring affordable housing in the marketplace when zoning regulations are, are um, really specific about requiring or only allowing large uh, homes on large lots that can often result in, in uh, homes that are very difficult for people to afford um, just in the marketplace as well. But whole, whole, whole rabbit hole we could go down there, but I hope that gives you a, a general sense of things. Great, thanks Alex. Um, I think we have time for uh, one more question. And so I'm going to um, ask John to unmute. Um, yes, hi, I, this is actually Lynn with John. Um, I just had a question regarding the um, the map that was basically black with some red areas. Is there a way we could see a closer view of that and what streets those cover? Yeah, we will. Um, we'll have plenty of maps in the reports, but then also whenever uh, we post this on our website, we can post the slides so that you can kind of zoom in to the maps on the slides that we've shared tonight. Um, but we'll have lots of maps in the final report too. And, and maybe at the next forum, we can not have that be black and look so ominous, but have it have a little bit more um, place, place settings so that you can get a sense for where things are. Yeah, and, and, and the, the significance of that particular map were, were just to show how little, how, how little of the town is actually, how, the small percentage of the town that actually has established zoning districts and that the, the majority of the town uh, kind of lies or falls outside of those established zoning districts. And um, if, um, if um, a building meets the, meets the, um, the, the lot and uh, the lot requirement, the dimensional requirements, um, basically anything can can kind of develop or be built on a particular parcel. 
based on the way that the existing zoning bylaw is structured. Hey, well, thank you so much for all of those good questions. I think that we are going to transition to the small group breakouts now uh, because we want to continue to hear from you, but it's a lot easier whenever there are 60 of us in a room together. So Christian is going to um, put us into breakout sessions, uh, breakout rooms. Each group's going to have a facilitator and a note taker so that we can make sure we capture everything that you all are saying. And like I mentioned earlier, we really want to hear what do you think of the information that we presented today? And then also what additional questions or information do you need to kind of form or continue forming opinions about zoning? So you'll have a pop-up on your screen and that's when you can join the breakout room and be sent away to, to smaller groups. Great, so um, in just a second, uh, I am going to open the breakout rooms. Um, the pop-up on the screen, you'll have to select yes for um, just so you, you have to opt in to going there. I can't send you there uh, myself, unfortunately. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, I will be staying in the main room. Um, in, and if any of you have any difficulty making your way into the breakout, um, I will be able to assist. So I'm gonna open the rooms right now. Uh, so you should all have gotten a notification. All right. Um, I'm assuming that if you're here, you either had trouble getting into the breakout room or um, are just going to hang out in the main session. Um, but Alexis, did you get the um, pop up? I think you're muted. No, I didn't get it. Or if I did, it's not, it's hiding somewhere, oh. which is entirely <laughs> likely. <laughs> okay. Um, let me. Um, Hold on just a second. Don't, if you just got one, don't click on it. Okay, now click on it. All right. Great. <laughs> um, Jack, I see that your hand is raised. Sorry, I was um, just helping Alexis real quick. Um, let me know if you need anything. I gave, I did ask, just ask you to unmute if you, um, are looking for some assistance. Welcome back, everybody. All right. Um, thank you all. I we. We were had some really good conversations underway in my breakout session. Uh, so I'm interested to to go through the notes from our note takers and um, um, sit down with Andrea and think through some of uh, some of the things that came up. So um, we want to do another Zoom poll and we want to kind of gauge how you um, now that we've kind of shared some general information about zoning, how familiar would you say you are with the concept now? So it's basically the same question that we asked in the beginning of the session. Uh, and Christian is going to launch that poll, which should be popping up right now. Um, All right, still waiting on a few folks to respond to the poll. We've got about 78% of 
of people who've responded. So if you're still thinking about it, now is your chance to respond. Um, but I will close the poll in 10 seconds. All right. So it's nice to see that nobody picked, not at all. So sounds like we did our job. Um, definitely more people have moved into the moderately familiar category, um, which is nice to see. All right. All right. Thank you, Christian. And thank you all. Um, next slide. All right, so I just want to talk uh, briefly about a few next steps and uh, things that um, we'll be looking for. Um, uh, so, um, so we'll, uh, as as I mentioned, Andrea and I will be drafting recommendations based part uh, based in part upon uh, input and feedback that we received during tonight's meeting. Uh, and we'll be sharing that information with you at the next community forum, uh, which doesn't have an official date uh, yet, but uh, is set to take place in late March. Um, the, the email addresses used uh, for tonight's meeting registration will receive a notification once that date has been set. So you'll uh, continue to be kept in the loop as we make progress. Um, um, and, and the date will also be posted on the project webpage, uh, which was shared earlier. And if someone can kind of share that again, I would really appreciate that in the chat. Next slide, Christian. All right. And so another next step is, um, is the online survey. So we want to encourage everyone to take the community survey, which is available online now. Um, you can access the survey through the link shown on the screen or by using the QR code. Uh, it, it will also be listed on the project webpage. Um, and it, just, it just went up on the town's webpage. This is Brendan Zabricki, town administrator. It just I just pushed send, if you will, now. So if you go there, you'll see it on the homepage. Thank you, Brendan. Uh, the survey asks questions to help us understand what's uh, most important to you and uh, the future of zoning in the town. Uh, we want to know what's working, what kinds of changes uh, you'd like to see, uh, and also your ideas on, on ways that the bylaw could be improved. Um, it should only take about 10 to 15 minutes to complete, um, and the survey will be, will be uh, open until March 1st. We, um, um, tonight's session was recorded. So uh, anyone who wasn't able to, um, to be here tonight can watch the presentation and provide feedback um, by taking the survey. So they'll see the same presentation that you, that you saw and um, to provide them with some context and then uh, hopefully be able to answer some of the questions that we're asking um, in the survey. Um, once again, I want to thank you all for joining us. Um, if you have additional questions or concerns or recommendations, uh, we've had people email us uh, kind of We've had uh, people who have actually taken time to read the bylaw and go section by section and kind of point out specific things to, to us. Uh, so if you want to do that and um, put that in a, a, a document and send that to Andrea or myself, we, we welcome that and we appreciate that. Again, um, I, I want to thank uh, the town and MAPC staff for helping us on this evening. Uh, I am going to turn things over to Kim Drake uh, to, to close us out for this evening. And, and this is Brendan. I just want to mention that if you, if everything went by a, a bit fast and you need more guidance or get connected with a resource or with a person, just contact the selectman's office through email or telephone. We'll take care of it for you. We'll help you. 
Thank you all. Um, thank you, um, Courtney and Andrea, certainly for facilitating this meeting. Um, we've all really appreciated it, and I think a lot of really good information has come out of it. Hopefully it's been helpful to everybody who's been online. And, and those of you who have participated, please um, you know, spread the word to others in town so that anybody else who's got an interest in, in what we're doing, what this project is, um, can participate in the, in the next um, event that we have. And also, you know, anybody can participate in the survey, not, not just people who are here today. Um, I would like to, um, as we close out this evening, um, adjourn the meeting of the Essex Planning Board. I would like to take a motion from one of the members to do that. Lisa, Matt, Wesley. So moved. So moved. Anybody want to second the adjournment of the planning board? Wes? Wes seconded in the chat. He seconded. Okay. Oh, super. Okay. <laughs> um, any discussion from the planning board before we adjourn? None. Hearing none. Um, okay. I will then. Um, adjourn the planning board's meeting for this evening. Thanks, Kim. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Andrew.